And we are recording. Excellent. Welcome to our third week of our April Hangouts, Marketing Local, looking at uh, social web tip for the South Africa tourism pros and uh, lessons that are relevant to people around the world who are working in tourism in their local communities. Uh, I'm Ron Motter from Planeta.com, and I'm joined by I'm joined today with two good friends, Martin Hatchell from This Tourism Week, and Greg Hubbs uh, from Transitions Abroad, based uh, the, it's based in the United States. Greg, can you um, you're new to our hangout and chats? Uh, can you introduce yourself, please? Um, okay. Um, uh, I haven't slept all night, so I'll have to keep it brief because my mind's a little foggy, but. Uh, uh, I've been, uh, basically I'm working on a uh, magazine uh, that, I mean on a website that was based on a magazine founded by my father back in 1977, uh, which uh, began exploring the, the concepts of uh, first educational and then responsible travel way back when, and I'm, you probably know better, Ron, uh, than I when he focused more on responsible travel, I know he was always uh, always interested in the uh, subject based upon our travels. Um, <clears throat> since I've taken over the website, I've um, I've included many articles on uh, on the site on on the subject of responsible travel and volunteerism, which I consider uh, a form of responsible travel. And uh, um, and uh, my only problem has been in being a for-profit site is that responsible travel subjects have not uh, brought in any income relative to the work, study, travel, and living uh, uh, topics which we cover uh, and, and have covered for years. So I'm the editor in chief, and basically. Uh, bring in articles, edit them, put them up, and try to, and I'm working on revising the site to make it eye candy the way uh, it seems the uh, search engines uh, want want uh, sites to be these days. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. Well, it's really good to have you on board and uh, your candid views on, you know, how you're seeing the, the traffic data, is, you know, most, uh, most welcome. Um, Let's see. Greg, is it? Um, uh, are we? Are we? Uh, uh, transition uh, transitionsabroad dot com. That's that's correct. Yes. Yeah, I'm I'm on your site now. Yeah, I just uh, just finished. In fact, that's what I was doing last night, putting out a new webzine. Uh, Based on uh, South Africa. Hello. Oh, thank you. oh you're there. Okay. I, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that'll come through in the oh, chat. There's, there's an open issue on Latin America. Yeah. Uh, not- uh, it, it includes. It starts with uh, our narrative travel writing contest winners, which we have once a year for those who don't want to, uh, you know, who, who want to explore the creative side. But even the narrative contest was based upon uh, uh, a subject which is very much in keeping with responsible travel. Um, it, but, uh, one second. Greg, mm-hmm. Greg, let me break in just for one second. We've had part of this conversation, you know, in which, you know, you, you have this legacy and Transitions Abroad has often in- embedded responsible travel into the features. Right. And to me, that's what I, I like the best. It's not just, um, you know, you, what I want to say, it, put, you know, it, it puts him, the responsible characteristics right in the article instead mm-hmm. of, you know, carrying off a, 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 a flag or a banner saying, you know, we are the responsible tourism website. You know, you're the transition to broad website. And really, kind of, you've been focusing on. On helping people from the United States, you know, travel abroad outside the U.S. And to me, there's a there's an incredible logic in what you're doing there. That I think it would be wise for other people to, you know, have a good look at transitionsabroad.com and see what you've done. Uh, frankly, in the transitions, 
is a site I don't think that is well, you know, I don't think it's well known in South Africa. So I think that maybe we can get a spike of traffic from from this conversation. <laughs> Well, I'd certainly yeah. like to. I'd like to get more submissions. Uh, we we function from you know via the submissions that we receive. Uh, certainly, I do as editor, and uh, we don't we don't get many submissions from South Africa. I have we have a few on the site, but uh, uh, we can only uh, you know I can only edit and uh, and uh, put out content in so far as I. Uh, as I receive it, so uh, you know, it certainly is useful to. Um, it would be useful to for us to be for people to be aware of us, I should say, uh, in in South Africa. I'll uh, I'll take on the job of of making at least some people aware of you, Greg. I well, thank you. Think that, that 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 you brought up, Ron. Um, I think that's very important. Is the difference between responsible travel and, for instance, ecotourism. In ecotourism, you're you're in to use the the, the boardroom bingo word. You're in a silo. Mm -hmm. uh, in cultural tourism, you're in a silo. In sports tourism, you're in a silo. But in responsible tourism, it's everything that you do when you travel or when you're studying, you're you're, you're researching your travel, and when you're reporting about your travels after your journey. Responsible tourism is a way of life, or it's a mm -hmm. way of traveling, whereas the others are niches. And you can go do an ecotourism experience this morning and a cultural tourism experience this afternoon, and the one may not be responsible, the other one may be. So That's it's right. very important that responsible travel is a, is, a, is a very broad thing. It's a whole lifestyle, um, and it's a whole travel lifestyle. Well, and, I think um, I agree with you. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. It's good to know that you're getting that. that I no, I, I, I understand, and I think that my father, being, uh, you know, both my parents being from an academic background, and and not not for uh, not not to, to for love of being in the acad academia, but for love of uh, reading and uh, learning and travel. Uh, my father was interested most in educational travel, and uh, for him, everything was about learning. So for him, I think responsible travel is a sub was. So I can't consult with him now <laughs> because he's he's passed. But uh, uh, was a subset of the idea of educational travel, meaning that you everything in everything you do, you're learning, and uh, you're learning and you're acting upon your knowledge. And uh, since they started out traveling in the early uh, '60s uh, through the through regions that very few people travel to. North Africa, the Middle East, in the midst of wars, etc. Uh, rather naively, perhaps uh, they saw the uh, so quote unquote ugly American, <laughs> and uh, they uh, they wanted to and uh, uh, they wanted to report back that there were other ways to travel besides the uh, you know the uh, glitzy uh, 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 um, you know uh, magazine. Uh, uh, glossy magazine style portrayed uh, in the United States, um, and, and now that now his uh, ironically the everybody's giving lip service to the idea that ideas almost verbatim that, uh, that 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 were part of his original mission statement, and for Ron's had a big part of. Uh, uh, in, of influencing it, I know. Um, I, but what I don't know is the sequence of events in terms of when my father started being interested in uh, in uh, in responsible travel or, or named it as such. Um, but again, I think it was an outgrowth of the idea of educational travel, and that all travel is learning and acting upon what you are, are have learned and are learning. So you know, in that sense, that's why uh, it, it's not in a silo. <laughs> you know, that 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 point leads us quite nicely into the topic for tonight's conversation, Ron, which is QR codes, because mm -hmm. the QR code is a fantastic way of sharing information mm -hmm. um, with people no, who are in. Let, 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 let people understand what a QR code is if you haven't okay. seen it yet. Uh, one, I have the giant version behind me. <laughs> uh, but here's a poster. My buddy uh, Boris, who works with uh, kids' workshops in Oaxaca, let's see if we can get this back. Um, and my friend Boris, he doesn't even use a computer, but he insists on having the QR code that goes to the wiki, <laughs> so that people can find out about his work and again how it 
fits together. Uh, QR code stands for Quick Response Code. And this will be the topic for the next uh, 20 minutes of our conversation. Uh, I've just looked on my on my new phone and I haven't downloaded the QR code reader yet. I've only had the phone a few weeks. So yeah, it's going to require a smartphone. And you, know, you boot the puppy up. There we are. And uh, you boot the puppy up, and uh, here I have it. It's called the QR reader. And it's a QR reader. It's kind of like a barcode at a supermarket. Um, you see these symbols in magazines, on billboards. Um, I've seen it at the airport, in gift stores, etc. Where again, you you know you wave your smartphone over it, it deciphers the text and lets you, you know, gives you this secret message. Uh, is it a gizmo? Yes. Is it eye candy? Yes. I mean, it's kind of, you know, it stands out. Uh, some people, including myself, you know, find it a bit well ugly, but it works. So if we're going to have these smartphones, it's a great way of using it. The um, the trick is though that you've got to have the app. Um, I've I've had quite a few people complaining that their cameras can't read the QR code. They don't. People people some people haven't grasped the difference between an app and a and a camera. But um, uh, yeah, you, you've got to have the app and you and you've got to use it um, to to uh, to you've got to tell it what to do. It's, it, it sounds it sounds crazy, but you do have to do that. <laughs> but once you've told it what to do, it can take you to a website, or it can provide you with text information, or various other types of data. Um, but in my in my work, I found that um, the, the website and 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 a particular web page, a page on a website is is the most useful because if you if you uh, tag a for instance, an uh, exhibition in a museum with a QR code, you can put a lot more information onto a website than you could onto a, um, a sign next to that that exhibit. So that if a person scanned that uh, that 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 code, they can go to a website and see uh, text, photographs, and videos, and maybe even listen to podcasts about that exhibit. Well, exactly. And, you know, Martin, one of the things we've seen is, for example, the example from Wikipedia that it worked with a town in Wales creating QR codes to go with various establishments in the town. Yes. And again, these codes then can be deciphered and then can be read in different languages. So if you're a tourist from Japan, you get the information in Japanese. If you're uh, if you're a gringo living in Mexico, you know, you I guess you get a choice of reading in English or Spanish. Um, but it's a really good way of showing how you connect this technology with uh, with some innovative, uh, you know, on the site um, ingenuity. For example, here's a family farm. You've seen labyrinths that are made uh, from by farmers. Well, here is a QR code labyrinth that you can walk through. And, Was that actually uh, cut into the field? That's actually cut in, cut into the field. Oh, lovely. But Martin, I want, can you give a little bit of an explanation of this presentation, uh, of what you did in Mossel Bay? Yeah, the history to digital interface. Um, <laughs> it's, it's uh, uh, we, we put up a whole lot of QR codes there. It's on the screen now. We put up a whole lot of QR codes at the uh, Diaz Museum complex. Bartholomew Diaz was the first uh, European to land on South African soil, and um, uh, in, in 1488. Uh, and the museum is is basically dedicated to mar maritime history, local history, and and now also the the um, archaeology of Mossel Bay, which has revealed the earliest evidence for hu modern human behavior. And there's so much information to get out. But the museum is like museums, I suppose, all over the world, especially here in, in Africa. It, it, it's cash-strapped. 
So what we did was we got the local tourism destination marketing organization, Muscle Bay Tourism, to fund the cost of research and writing pages for various uh, exhibits around the museum. And we put up these QR codes like you can see here uh, at the post office tree, which is where sailors in the old days used to leave messages for one another. Um, the, 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 apparently, that was always they were always left in an old boot, which is why the <laughs> modern day box there is shaped like an old sailor's boot. And um, we 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 put up the QR code, and then when when you went to the page um, on on our brochure, it was three hundred and ninety four four words. But when you if you if you follow the QR code, if you read the QR code and went to your and went to the page on on our website, we've got six hundred and sixty five words there and with space for more, and we've got videos there, and we've got photos there. So somebody who's at the post office can, tree, can get a full description, not only of, of, the, of the history of the tree, but of the botany of the tree, and anything else we want to put on there. So we, we're able to tell our stories, and the, the value of this is that it's not only the people who are on the ground reading the QR codes that can see this. If anybody uh, searches post office tree on normal Google search, they'll find um, they, 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 they might come across this page and so um, it, it serves a dual purpose. It serves a purpose on the ground and it serves a pur purpose online. Well it's done. working very well. well. It's working very well. Fantastic. Greg, have you uh, used QR codes yourself? Uh, only in our, insofar as we've discussed them. Uh, I have read quite a bit about them and uh, have read that uh, Google looks fondly on them uh, and in in terms of their inclusion on your website and uh, it, it, it does help your uh, search rankings which uh, which uh, uh, certainly never hurts <laughs> uh, since uh, the majority of traffic for, at least for me still comes from organic search so there's one uh, caveat mm-hmm and um, that is that if you're going to use them in print, you have to be careful where you use them. Um, the, the height above the ground, the size, um, and the positioning. Um, I mean, there's one famous example where somebody put a tiny QR code on the opposite side of the tracks uh, on, on, a, on a busy um, um, subway, in a busy subway station. So <laughs> it's for, for the QR code to work, you would have had to actually cross the tracks to the, to the other side, and, and, and yeah, that, you've got to make. They've got to be large enough for the for the for the application. In this presentation, um, on on the on the back page of the the last page of the presentation, the first man who um, sorry, the second last page of the presentation, the first man who who used the QR codes on the day that we launched them was Patrick Kelly Kelly. Um, from 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 Canada, and he was really excited to see them. Um, and he told me that the small town that he lived in had recently had floods, and the council had quickly printed a huge QR code on the back of a trailer, which it towed around the city, uh, and anybody could scan that, and that gave you that automatically gave you the information where you could take your pets for shelter, where you personally could go to shelter. Where you could get fresh drinking water and so on and so forth. Um, so the, the the size that they had used, um, judging from what he said, it sounded like it was sort of two meters by two meters or even bigger. A meter is a yard. <coughs> Sorry, but here and you can see in in the picture the size of the QR codes and the height of the QR codes uh, where we're using them. So it's a it's size appropriate and and it's at the right height for comfortable use. That's a good point, Martin. And I think you know when people you know. Are learning to use QR codes for the first time, and they create their QR code. Uh, the question is just making sure that the printout uh, works. So there's and there's no better way than just testing it out. So for example, in August we're having the conference, uh, the unconference on Indigenous people and tourism. And so, as in all the posters that I make for events, there's a QR code that. It's very easy to make it too small or to have a printer that doesn't print it uh, fine enough. So the best advice that I have is just to give it a test, uh, to talk it over with people. Uh, the posters that I make invariably include you know, a web link as well. So 
you know, the people who want to go through the, the hassle of writing down samantha.wikispaces.com diagonal indie week 2013, they can go straight to the page. The person that has a smartphone scans that and goes to the page. But test it out. You know, you know, use these things, see how it works. Uh, we are still looking for innovative stories. So if you are using QR codes in an innovative fashion, if you would allow us to quote you, uh, highlight your examples, you know, please tweet um, and include a message to uh, to uh, to ourselves and use that marketing essay hashtag, and we will be looking at QR codes beyond this conversation. What we haven't mentioned, Ron, is how do you create a QR code? Here's one of the QR code generators. You just need to search QR code generator on 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 the on Google, it's goqr.me. It's one of many different types. They're free to use. You can create different size uh, QR codes and uh, and download them and use them in print. Now, it is it is a nifty little toy, and it really works out well. Now, do you know, Ron, if there's any software that will take a QR code and automatically bookmark it, uh, so that uh, you know you can create a you know a bookmark list of you know of what you've uh, of you know of, of the QR codes that you've uh, uh, encountered. Well, often because I'm all th I'm sorry I'm all thumbs with my smartphone. So by the t you know for me to bookmark something after I've received a website, you know I, I I probably wouldn't be able to manage that. You know. Well, I, I hear you uh, again. You know, if you again, if we use the uh, QR code reader mm -hmm. on your application, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is I'm not I'm scanning myself and I can't see me. Um, mm -hmm. But if you use this uh, QR code reader, it should have within it uh, some of the applications of of checking out the previously viewed uh, chats you've had. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why this, my picture is not coming up, but oh well. Um, <laughs> What's happening there? Today's uh, chat is kind of going through, uh, is not really going to the voice, it doesn't seem. No, I, I was coughing, right. coughing, choking, and splashing. There I am. Yeah. So again, you know, we, we're, just take a look at your application. And if your application doesn't have a list uh, or a way of accessing things, uh, then get a different, check out a different application. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, frankly, you know, I. Uh, another service that I use on my smartphone, I don't know if you've heard of this, this is completely different, but uh, I use Shazam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fun. And Shazam is to identify music. So you have the Shazam program listening to the recorded music, and it will tell you what song it is, and then try to sell you that song. Um, that I've actually used you know, in creating a playlist. But you know there are so many different ways of you know using this this technology in, in a successful and fun way. Ron, um, here in South Africa, where where we have issues with cell phone coverage, um, you also if you're going to put up QR codes at a remote location um, on a on a game reserve or in in a in a bird sanctuary or something, you need to know that. Your smartphone is actually going to have the the bandwidth, uh, or, or that your your uh, su a supplier is going to provide the bandwidth so that smartphones can read these things and then convert them to to the web page. There's no point in putting up a QR code if if you're on edge, um, the, which is the slowest form of broadcast here, uh, and, and the smartphones won't be able to lift your um, uh, uh, bring up your your uh, de desired website web page no I, I hear you and I, you know again I think it's place specific I think it's timing specific you know notice that we could not have had this conversation and be considered sane people five years ago or ten years ago you know this just wasn't this wasn't in the cards so the question is what will be available in 2013 or what will be available in 2018 I also well, I think, think it's probably you know, a good idea to think, you know, what sort of technology we want and where. Um, I know 
for example, again, talking about our good friend Ivar Rupel in Estonia, you know, the parks in Estonia uh, have, for the most part, pretty good internet access. The parks. Yeah. But to go off road, to go into the uh, go off into the hinterlands of Zion National Park or the Grand Canyon or the Everglades in the United States uh, or Kruger in South Africa, you know, do we really want to have all of this technological gadgetry? Uh, I would argue it's really important to have this in the in the museum, in the visitor information center. Um, on site, on the ground, maybe not. It's not so important. Uh, there are other cool ways of using technology. Uh, I'm a big fan of Fluker Post in in Australia, but that just requires people taking photos at specific spots. But you know where you, we go. You also like. You also go like ahead. the pin. You also like the pin board. Nothing wrong with that. Above the phone board, yeah. The, <laughs> any sort of you know, we need to have. We need to have ways of engaging with the community, of ways of engaging and getting information that deepen our experience. If we're going to be buried, you know, with our nose into the cell phone, you know, frankly, that's no worse than our nose in a guidebook or a comic book, uh, yeah. of which I've been guilty. But <clears throat> these things are very place specific and time specific. You know, nothing. You know, these you know different, and and I believe that we need to have conversations with the visitors and with the locals. You know, at any point where this becomes too obnoxious, then we don't use it. When it's helpful, then I think we should underscore it and say, here's how it works. Quite interesting. I, I, <clears throat> we, we, my eldest son got married recently, and the kids were quite upset that um, somebody had tweeted a photograph of the ceremony. Uh, during the ceremony, and the ceremony was held on the beach, and the kids said, oh, "We're in a we're in a nature area. What are you doing with your phone?" <laughs> so it is. It's about being appropriate, and that's what responsible tourism is all about. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, I, I was at a wedding two weeks ago in, in the Mixteca region of Mexico, and, and they asked me to take photos, and so I took photos, um, but. I was actually, you know, the, the 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 bride and groom were actually mobbed by photographers who were all less than ten years old, who all had their cameras and taking pictures of, you know, pictures. But the again, it's the digital natives, it's the kids who are taking these photos. But it all changes. That is the groom and my grandson. Uh, Can I, am I allowed to boast? Yeah, very handsome. <laughs> They're beautiful people. They yeah. really are. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm very proud of them. Anything else we should add about QR codes for today? Yes, I think one more thing. I don't think we've stressed it enough. To me, responsible tourism is grounded in storytelling. And this... QR code is a fantastic way of sharing stories. Um, it's an inexpensive technology. Um, I, I know a lot of the nerds and the and the and the and the techs don't like it. Uh, they don't think it's cool, but I think it's cool because it works and it gets those stories told. Mm -hmm. Well said. Yeah. Greg, any final words on your side? Uh, no, I'm, next time I'll be a little more clear-headed, I, mean, I apologize. I, I tend to work all night, no, no, so, no. I'd be, so I, I, I'm uninterrupted, but uh, uh, next time Great, I can be a little Great. more clear. I'm so happy you're here with that. Um, yeah, I mean, I could right, speak, I could speak, I could speak on the slow travel, slow food movement, et cetera, and, and in the future, if you ever want to speak on that. That's one of that's one of my particular obsessions, which connects, uh, uh, because most of my experience is in Europe, which uh, which uh, has sort of taken uh, uh, responsible travel uh, 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 for granted for for many years. I think, especially particularly in Italy, which is naturally communal. <laughs> uh, 
And it, in fact, it's no accident that there's the Communist Party was so strong, and communists did not well, in a centralized what, we will, way. We will come back. We will come back to have that conversation with you. Sure. Um, but I want to thank everybody for watching. Um, we will be back next Wednesday, April 24th at 5 p.m. in South Africa. We're going to try to keep it as, as a half-hour chat today. But um, thank you all for, for paying attention. I'll be updating the Planeta Wiki, the QR code page, as well as the Marketing SA page. And again, for people uh, who are curious and hungry for more information about responsible travel and good travel around the world, take a look at transitionsabroad.com and keep an eye on this tourism week. That is a CO. That's, that's correct. That's CO. That's tourism week. That's CO. And we'll have the links there in the, in the YouTube page uh, shortly. Great. We're in the broadcast now. I want to thank my guests and thanks to viewers. And uh, we'll be back soon. Cheers. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, Ron.